We all know that super delicious feeling of when you get into your bed and you stretch out and cover yourself up in those blankets and you feel yourself like exhaling and then you sink in and settle and adjust and close your eyes and you can just quickly and easily, almost effortlessly just drift off into this most delicious sleep where you go into a deeply restorative and restful place versus the nights when you're tossing and turning and up and frantic and have to go to the bathroom three times and you can't believe you feel like because you haven't slept and you can't believe it's already morning and it's been for hours and you're just in your bed almost suffering that's insomnia right and then the next day you have to wake up and business as usual and go be a mom or go be at work or go do whatever you need to do so that you can meet the needs of everybody in your life and you can be effective in your life and then if that happens day after day or a few times in a week that starts to affect your emotions and your feelings and it starts to weigh on you and it actually it impairs your ability to make decisions and your ability to work and your ability to drive and then it influences your immune system and then before you know it you're stressed out overwhelmed and you're sick and we don't want that nobody likes that nobody wants that so that's what we're going to talk about today and if this is our first time meeting my name is maria chaudhry and i'm a licensed midwife and an herbalist and i'm the owner and creator of birth song botanicals and we make nourishing herbal remedies for women and children but we do more than that we we carry on the nourishing and healing traditions of midwives. And we do that through education, like our blogs and our videos and our podcasts. We do that through, in this segment, we've been making all these meditations for sleep and for um, helping relieve stress and to help foster mindfulness practices. So we create meditation videos and follow along Qigong videos. And then we also create nourishing herbal remedies for women and children. And that's just a big part of how we show up in the world. And I'm really glad you're here right now. We're live and I have these two cameras in two different places. And I'm trying to see where to put my eyes. So if it looks weird to you, that's because the cameras are like here. And so maybe if I stand here, I can see you both. I'm not sure. Anyways, I'm so glad you're here. And I'm in front of the camera, and I, so I can't see your comments or your questions or suggestions or inputs. I can't even tell if you're there. But Heaven is behind the camera, and she can let me know. And so just because I can't see your comments doesn't mean I don't want to engage or interact with you. And so I encourage you, if you're listening today and if you're here today on this, where we are right now in Fayetteville, it's this beautiful, rainy autumn morning. And we're here, I guess it's noon by now, but it's just this gorgeous autumn day. And so I encourage you to tell us where you're listening from and tell me in the comments if you can relate to either the, the falling asleep in that peaceful, sweet way or falling asleep and tossing and turning and waking up and how that affects you. Yeah? So... When you feel the, feel the feeling, when you feel ready, go ahead and start to chime in. And so we can start talking about sleep and we can start talking about effective ways for you to live your healthiest, happiest, most fulfilling life. And sleep is a big part of it. We've been having this whole series of the last few weeks we've been talking about nourishing herbs because people are so deeply fatigued and depleted. We've been having a whole series all about adaptogenic herbs and a whole series about stress and anxiety. And now sleep just comes right into that because it's a perfect ending for this series about stress and anxiety. It's not that it's completely over that we've covered all the topics, but sleep then lends itself into talking about immune health because when you can get a good night's sleep, what really happens is you go, you enter a deep place of relaxation, and then that's where healing happens. That's where healing on an emotional level, a physical level happens. That's where your immune system is strong. 
That's how you can show up in the world. And so this live and this week series is all about sleep. And then the next time we meet will be all about immune health. And it'll be on Halloween, so I wonder if you're going to wear a costume. <laughs> I'm not. I might. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay, so let's get started. I'm going to have a sip and talk about sleep. Because we all know that sleep is foundational. It is the hallmark. It is the, the pillar in which well-being is built on. You need, you need nourishment, you need hydration, and you need adequate rest. And you need movement. And our sleep changes throughout our life, right? So you think of a newborn and how they sleep. They sleep nearly 20 hours in a 24-hour day. And then you think of a toddler. They're kind of tossing and turning. And, and then you think of a child and then a teenager who wants to go back to sleeping till 2 in the afternoon. And then you, want, then you think about the young adult when you think you don't really even need to sleep. You can go for days, right? And then you have the working adult that's trying to fit in this nine to five schedule, right? And they got all this stress and they're carpooling and, and or driving and they just have a lot on their plate and they might have a challenge up their sleep. And then you have this pregnant mom who all of a sudden has all these new sleep disturbances. And then you have this postpartum mom who has a newborn. She has a whole different challenge with sleep. And then you have Back to maybe a time in your life where you're kind of waking up and falling asleep on your own terms, maybe. And then you go into menopause and perimenopause where you start having hot flashes and anxiety and night sweats and so that affects your sleep. And then we go into our golden years and our elder years and your need for sleep is really different. And so the need for sleep is the same. It's just how the sleep shows up in our life is really different, right? So the need for that deep restorative sleep exists throughout our entire life. A few things I want to talk about. If you're pregnant and you're listening, I have a, a couple of things to bring your attention to. We have two resources for you. One is the ultimate, or it's called the Sleep Pregnancy Sleep Survival Guide. And the Pregnancy Sleep Survival Guide, there, there'll be a link to it, it's on our blog, and it breaks up the your pregnancy by, by trimesters. And you know, your first trimester, you're exhausted. And then your second trimester, you feel a little bit better, but you, and then you're falling asleep, and then all of a sudden, what's that? You feel the baby move. Oh, and then you start having these really vivid dreams. And then you have third trimester where you're full, and you're big, and you're heavy, and you're starting maybe to feel a little uncomfortable, or you're starting to feel like you need to sleep in certain positions, and you need pillows, and you need to make sure that you're laying on your left side so you have optimal fetal circulation. And, and so I have a whole guide for you on that. And then there's also a guide for all about pregnancy insomnia. So I encourage you to look at that. And then also for all of you brand new or postpartum moms that are at home with your newborn and you're struggling with sleep, I have three resources for you on our blog and they'll be linked. One of the resources is called How Breastfeeding Safe Sleep. Another one is, oh, Safe Co-Sleeping and Bed Sharing. And then another one is about realistic sleep expectations for newborns. So if you have like a real, a realistic expectation for what your baby's going to sleep like, then that's going to help you sleep more comfortable. So I encourage you to check those out. I need a sip. We have some people joining us today. Yay! Hi! I'm glad you're here. Um, yay! So tell us in your in the box where you're listening from or. If, you, if any of you are pregnant or postpartum or can relate to any of those changes in your sleep cycle. While you're thinking about it, I'm going to start talking about more about sleep and potentially more about what I really want to talk more about is like other than being pregnant and then or other than being awake with your newborn, what are some other things that might be influencing your sleep are disrupting your sleep and what's causing insomnia. Let's talk about what insomnia is, like the definition of insomnia. So the definition of insomnia is just simply the dissatisfaction of the quality or the quantity or the timing of your sleep. And it's categorized as if you have three times in a week lasting a month. 
So for one month, every week, three nights a week, you're not sleeping well for a month. That's called insomnia. And we all know I was a midwife. I was called out in the middle of the night for years, for 17 years. And I lived on this like lack of sleep. And for a while, you start to think that, oh, I'm fine. I can work well on low sleep. I don't even need that much sleep. But that's really a myth. And the lack of sleep will really hurt you, either really quickly or in the long term. It's going to lead to aging. It's going to lead to disease. It can lead to disorders. It can lead to poor decision making, a weakened immune system, uh, fr fragility in your emotions or anger or rage. It can lead to like accidents and impairment at work, impairment at home. I mean, it's kind of a big deal. So what are some of the things that might be causing this insomnia? And then what are some of the things that might help you? Okay. What are some of the things that might be causing it? One big part of it is we sometimes we're trying to fit into this artificial schedule and we have our schedule changes and we have a lot of people and a lot of things influencing us when we can fall asleep. And so we're not really in control of that schedule, right? Another thing is just not being outside enough and not like having our bare feet on the ground and not seeing the night sky and seeing the moon. What we see are artificial lights, right? Another thing that can be interfering our sleep is, I guess, probably pregnancy related, but the need to get up and have frequent urinations, GI upset, uh, snoring, either you're snoring or your partner's snoring. Um, Feeling like pain, feeling like pain in your legs, restless legs, leg cramps, muscle tension, having like physical or psychological stressors, those all start to keep you awake. This is just a short list. And this video, this live video is a synopsis of what we're talking about this week. And I've made a much longer, more in-depth video about um, the reasons to keep you awake. So I'm going to give you a list here and then there's so much more on the video that's associated. What else keeps you awake? And help? Another thing is people might misuse or abuse um, substances like caffeine or nicotine or alcohol or sugar or prescription medications or over-the-counter medications. All of those influence your sleep. Not even to mention just like the bombardment of all these lights that we're on our phone, we're on our TV, we're watching stressful shows, either they're fake shows, like, I don't know, what's the one that I haven't watched that everybody else has watched with the dragons? Game of Thrones. Great Game of Thrones, yeah, I haven't even watched that one because I want to sleep. Um, <laughs> you know, stressful shows or like real shows like the news you know, and wondering about, like, where are the children on the border? Whatever happened with that? I don't know. That stresses me out. makes it so I can't sleep. Things like that. Um, and then what are some ways that we can help you get better sleep? So we can help you get better sleep by just some healthy, it's called sleep hygiene, some healthy sleep hygiene and having some lifestyle practices. And then also we can start to incorporate herbs into helping you get better sleep. So let's come to the foundation, back to the foundation. I'm going to come to this every time, probably every video I ever talk about, is nourishment. We need, you need your vitamins and minerals. You need dark, leafy, green things, nourishing herbs, right? Nourishing foods, enough water. Um, you need the movement. You need the breath. You need the stretch. You need the pause, right? We've, I've spent like legit a full two months talking about nourishment. So there are lots of videos for you to look at that. But that's foundational because when you don't have enough vitamins and minerals, that's when you're gonna have the pain. That's when you're gonna have the restless legs. That's when you're gonna have the cramp. That's when you're gonna have the muscle tension, right? So once you get your nourishment figured out and you've had enough to eat and sleep and you've moved around, another thing that's going to help you fall asleep really is exhaustion. So you can either have mental exhaustion or physical exhaustion. And I'm really talking about physical exhaustion is going to help you sleep. Mental exhaustion might 
help you sleep. But I think in my own body, when I'm mentally exhausted, it means because I was on the computer all day and my mind hurts. And then like I want to fall asleep, but sometimes it takes me a while and my mind is just playing through the day, day after day. And it's just like almost downloading all the images that I saw. So that doesn't promote sleep. So physical exhaustion when my body is sore and tired from practicing karate or martial arts or walking or whatever it is we do, that, that will help you fall asleep. So making sure you get enough movement. Another thing that in, interferes kind of with the thoughts running through your head, going back and forth, back and forth, is we sometimes think we're get, and it's smart to do this, I understand why we do this, is that we're gonna prepare for tomorrow. Right? I gotta get ready. Tomorrow I got this list. And you know, every one of us, our list is like long, right? And if we can get any some of it done, that feels good. Half the time I like do something and then I put it on the list so I can cross it off and it looks like, woohoo, look, I did that. It wasn't even on the list, but I did it and now my list looks more accomplished. But so we wanna cross things off our list until we're thinking about it. As a part of your bedtime routine, I wanna start to flesh out a healthy bedtime routine. But as part of your bedtime routine, like an hour before bed, at least an hour before bed, is when you have fleshed out your day, is when you've written out what you're gonna do the next day. Really, ideally, if you work away from home, flesh out your next day at work. Or if you work from home, like I do, flesh out your next day, kind of like set an artificial work day is over at three o'clock, four o'clock, and then start to just flush that out then. And so you're not taking that to bed with you. If you have to, I always have a notebook beside my bed. So, you know, but creative people, creative people, busy people, entrepreneurs, mothers, parents, dreamers, we're, we have ideas, right? And so our brain, as much as we can meditate and quiet and calm our brain, our brain is just full of these great ideas. So I encourage you to have the notebook there and so you can just write it down really quick. So that can be your ideas. And I'm in a place of ideas, but I know for certain some of us are in a place of worries and concerns and stresses. And so when you're laying there and you think that thought, oh, and then here it comes, you think it again in a different variation, and oh, you think it again in almost the same variation, and just write it down. Write it down. And I made, a, a, like I said, a guided meditation about this to help you put your thoughts into this basket and so they can lift away and they can be sorted out and so I can guide you through that process if you want if you listen to that meditation. Some other things to really keep in mind is your bedroom should be so dark, dark like you can't see your hand in front of your face. There should be no lights, like your desk is not there, your TV is not there, your phone is not there, your whatever, your iPad is not there. Right? It's, your bedroom is for sleeping and for intimacy. That's the only thing it's for. Right? So all these other activities can be taken place in another space in your home. That'll help you sleep more. Like I said, I made a much more extensive list. Another thing that I want to think about, I want you to think about, is if you're living, if you're a brand new postpartum mom, this is gonna be harder for you, but you're gonna, you can still try. But the point I'm trying to make is if your life is hectic and you're not sleeping well and you're kind of all over the place and your emotions are up and down and your health is up and down and you're just feeling really burned out and overwhelmed, what you're really coming to, what you're striving for, if you're watching this video, is you're striving for harmony. You're striving for getting in sync. You're striving for this, this rhythm in your life that becomes dependable. So in order to do that, you're gonna to try to wake up around the same time every day. You're gonna to try to go to sleep around the same time every day. And then having healthy bedtime routines. So a healthy bedtime routine means turn off the bright lights, light a candle, make a cup of tea. I'm gonna to talk to you, why don't I talk to you about that? Make a cup of tea, tranquility. So tranquility is what I'm drinking right now. Tranquility is blended with chamomile and lemon balm passion flower and lavender it's incredibly soothing it's filled and you know what else it has in it is oat straw oat straw is and chamomile both are rich in calcium and that calcium is a is a vitamin and mineral it's more of a it's a mineral obviously that helps you 
and helps your muscles relax, helps your body relax, helps you reduce pain. It, they are carminative. These herbs are, herbs are carminative. That means they help you with GI upset, relaxing abdominal tension, and then they also help you have really good bowel movements in the tomorrow morning, the next morning. And it has lavender. We've talked a lot about lavender, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. But lavender is an herb that really expresses self-love. This is the tea that we're drinking right now, and I've been doing, I've had two cups of this so far, and I'm starting to feel a little, little relaxed. <laughs> so tranquility. And drinking about a cup of it or two an hour before bed. And then... Another, if you could like, if there weren't so many outside influences and you could really like do things your way, the right way, you could draw yourself a bath, right? An herb bath. So that's soothing herb bath. And soothing herb bath is right here. It's a blend of magnesium sulfate, which is called Epsom salts, another mineral to help your body relax, right? It's filled with lavender, sage, St. John's wort, and rosemary. Let's tell you a little bit more about each one of those. So sage, how often, which we all do this, but I'm asking this question to you, how often do we carry around other people's burdens, other people's stress, other people's problems, other people's pain, other people's life? We're just, it's, it's just like through osmosis, you walk in the room and it just clings to you like, like Velcro. Right? So sage is incredibly healing and incredibly cleansing and purifying. So one of the activities that I like to imagine is when you get in the bath, just allow the sage and the water to pull that out of you and put it into the water. I'll tell you more about that. We'll go back to that imagery. St. John's wort is an herb for pain, for nerve pain. Rosemary is an herb to help you remember. Yes, it helps you remember things in your mind, but it also helps you re-put re back together, remember pieces of your body to pull back lost parts of yourself, to bring back those parts of yourself that you love, that you haven't been in touch with. And then the lavender, I said, is self-love, and it's self-care, and it's an act of self-worth. And this bath is like a deep embrace. This water is holding you. It's bringing the parts of you back to you, and it's releasing the parts of you that are not yours, that you do not need, while you hold yourself, love yourself, and nourish yourself. And then that water is there and warm and wonderful, and then when you're ready, when you get out, you pull the plug, stay in the tub for a little while and feel the water, the level of the water going away. And you feel the water pulling away all those worries, stresses, burdens, all that just pain just goes away down into the drain. You feel it leave you, physically leave your body. And then you stand up and get ready for bed. So, um... Heaven's trying to tell me something. To hurry up. <laughs> I've drank a lot of relaxing tea. So I've got some more to say. So another thing is we have good night tincture. Good night tincture is for sleep. It's a non-habit forming uh, herbal remedy that helps you with sleep. And it's a tincture. One of the benefits of tinctures is that they don't make you wake up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom. But it's, it's filled and blended with chamomile and catnip and valerian and passion flower. And you would take one dropper before bed. I'll just show you how to do that. Mm -hmm. It tastes really good. I really want you to get used to putting water under your tongue and then put the dropper of herbs and really hold it there longer than I did. The longer you hold it, the faster it's going to work. You take it about an hour before bed and then again right at bedtime and then again if you wake up in the middle of the night. A couple other things I want to talk to you about are 
these herbs, these herbs that valerian and passion flower, they're called hypnotic herbs. And in a related video last week or a few weeks ago, I made this whole series about relaxing nervines. So there are these nervines, this ca category of herbs that stimulate your central nervous system. And some of them can be stimulating, some of them can be tonifying, some of them are relaxing. And then there are these other ones, you can break down relaxing herbs into a category that's even more relaxing. There's sedating herbs and then there's hypnotic herbs, right? And valerian and passion flower enter this hypnotic state. And this hypnotic state is this place of deep, restful, healing sleep, right? It's not fitful sleep, it's healing sleep. And so the related video is all about hypnotic herbs and they talk and I talk more about passion flower and about valerian because they go really well together. They're helpful for anxiety, but they definitely help you sleep well. Hmm. There's a lot more I want to say. Essentially, what I do want to say though about sleep is when you're having, when you're going through your life and you're making these life changes and you're improving and you're um, having all these new life affirming practices and you're incorporating herbs, you have to remember that not one herb is going to solve your insomnia problem. It's a whole life. It's a whole multifaceted, multidimensional approach, right? And then I also want to say it's a, there's a psychology to it. You have to ask yourself, why? Why? What am I going to bed to? So what am I saying no to so that I can have the bedtime routine that I need? So then really the next question becomes, what am I waking up for? What am I getting out of bed for? Why? What pulls me? Am I getting out of bed because I have to and I'm going to just work a job that I don't really like? I'm feeling trapped at my house. I'm feeling trapped and there's nothing really going for me and I feel really stressed and overwhelmed. Well, that's going to be really crummy waking up. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't. I don't. I don't want to. That's what my son says every day. I don't want to. He doesn't want to go to high school. What versus me, I wake up, boom, because I have stuff to do, because something inside of me is exciting. There's some creative force inside of me. There's something that pulls me that I want to do, right? That I want to do. So I encourage you to find that thing that you want to do, because that thing, that's your heart's desire. That's your purpose. And I want you to follow your heart's desire and follow your purpose. And so when you do that, you wake up. And when you wake up, you wake up energized and enlivened. You wake up full, present, and ready to engage. Essentially, that's what this, I just gave you a synopsis of this week's series, all about sleep. The associated videos are going to go into more depth about what's causing your sleep problems, ways to improve your sleep problems, more in depth about our herbs, more in depth about valerian and passion flower, and about hypnotic herbs. And like I said, it's the perfect segue into next videos, next week's videos, all about immune health. Hmm. So, my friends, I encourage you drink deep and always walk in beauty.